Hello friends, in this video we are going to see a most essential device in an electronic circuitry and that is BJT. BJT stands for Bipolar Junction Transistor. BJT is the most essential ingredient in most of the electronic applications like amplifier, oscillator or day to day life digital computers where we can have a BJTs in a large number and that form a structure called as IC integrated circuit. So why it is called as a transistor? For amplification purpose we are passing a signal through a small resistance or a low resistance path to high resistance path. That means we are transferring a signal from low resistance to high resistance. What exactly we are doing? We are transferring a resistance. Hence it is called as transferring of a resistance means transistor. So transistor is nothing but transferring a signal from low resistance to high resistance area. There are two types of transistors. One we call as unipolar and second is bipolar. So depends upon whoever carrying a charge or current based on that the name of a transistors are given as unipolar and bipolar. What does that mean? We do have charge carriers. So in unipolar current is flowing because of majority charge carriers only. Whereas in case of a bipolar current is flowing because of both the charge carriers majority and minority. How to determine majority and minority charge carriers? It all depends upon extrinsic semiconductor whether your impurity is a pentavalent or trivalent. So in case of a pentavalent impurity one electron is excess hence it is a n type and current is flowing because of electrons. So electrons are in majority whereas holes are in minority but still we are getting currents because of both the charge carriers. Similarly for a trivalent, for a trivalent one vacancy for electron is there which we called as holes. So holes are more in number hence majority charge carriers are holes whereas electrons are less in numbers hence minority charge carriers are electrons. But in a BJT which is a bipolar junction transistor we are getting current because of both the charge carriers. But that is not a case for a unipolar transistor. Example of a unipolar transistor is JFT, junction field effect transistor or MOSFET, metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor whereas bipolar is simply BJT. Here we are going to focus on BJT that is bipolar junction transistor. So let's discuss construction of BJT. So BJT is a three terminal device it is three layer device so I'll explain this. So we have a P type N type semiconductors. So basically if I have three layers laid one after the other then I am getting a three layer device based upon which layer you are putting between other two layers there are two types of configuration and those configurations are NPN and second is PNP. 
So NPN transistor P layer is sandwiched between two N layers. So it will be like this. These are the two N layers. P layer is sandwiched between them. And three terminals are taken out. Those three terminals are called as emitter, base and collector. Whereas PNP will be like this. Again three terminals are emitter, base and collector. Now certain things we need to remember over here. All these three are extrinsic semiconductors. Therefore, here it is N type, P type and it is once again N type. So, for emitter, the emitter layer is highly doped. and it has area greater than base but little less than collector. So I can say it is a moderate area. Base, base is very lightly doped. Doping means adding impurity either a trivalent or pentavalent and this area is very less whereas collector is moderately doped moderate doping means doping is more than base but little less than emitter and the area is largest So, any transistor while making, we keep all these three things in mind. Also, we have to keep in mind one thing. Since it is a three layer device, so obviously it is forming two junctions. So, two junctions are like this. Here we have one junction between emitter and base. And another junction we are having over here, which is between collector to base. Whatever we have discussed for NPN transistor, same is applicable for PNP transistor also. So, I will write over here, this junction is emitter base or you can say base emitter junction, also called as input side junction. So, you can say input junction in a transistor is base emitter. Similarly, this junction we call as collector base, which we call as output junction. Rest of the concepts of doping and area level is absolutely similar to that of NPN transistor. Let us draw a symbol for it. NPN transistor and here it is PNP. So, NPN transistor is like this. It has three terminals out and those terminals are collector, base, emitter and for PNP transistor, the transistor will be like this. Terminals are emitter, base and collector. What this arrow represents? This arrow represents direction of flow of current. Similarly over here, this will be the direction of flow of current.
if you see its layer structure once again so i'll draw it for npn transistor if you see properly it is like two diodes connected like this see here np so the first diode and second pn so two diodes back to back so for pnp transistor whatever we have discussed for npn is applicable that mean if a three layer structure is like this with the terminals as emitter base collector the overall structure is like this so here you are having a pn and here pn like this or you can say np so again two diodes connected back to back why this is so important because this is just like two diodes connected so whatever theory for pn junction diode that we have learned studied it's applicable over here thank you